Very good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> Little tired, I'm going to ask this you again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> thank you, thank you. After our beloved uh, chairman and uh, respected uh, uh, our SIRC chairman giving you ocean of knowledge, my job becomes very simple to add just a couple of drops. After all, ocean is made by drops. And uh, while I am sharing this with you, I can see a number of my colleagues who are in this particular focus for more than two decades and three decades. I can see a number of them. I may not have interacted in a forum like this, but long back I did here in Bangalore. But I have been interacting with uh, quite a few of uh, the colleagues who are right here for more than two decades or even three decades. I am so proud that uh, you are all dedicating, devoting, so much of your time on a topic, charitable trust. This shows the great social responsibility of uh, our profession by your very precious time, which is not comparable with anything else on a Friday in August 25th for this topic. I am absolutely encouraged, inspired and uh, I am happy to share some thoughts and also place some important suggestions based on my experience in all humility but in all seriousness. Um, when I look back, the ocean of knowledge we already got and I will look ahead next uh, an hour and a half which is going to also you know, cut across a little bit of our uh, lunch time. Uh, I feel 1975 of Bangalore and 2016 of Bangalore. I also married, my wife is from Bangalore. But uh, our beloved chairman can loudly say one wife, I have to be very cautious because she is right from Bangalore, right from this part of the city and right here in Basantinagar can over here. <laughs> my family members can easily over here. You know, so I have to be cautious in saying this. But why I said 1975 of Bangalore and 2016 of Bangalore? 1975 of Bangalore when I come first to see, of course you are seeing before marriage, you go and see, go, you are about to see your would-be wife, of course you are more excited. But much more than that, also the Bangalore, the climate, the ambience, the environment, the garden city and no traffic. Today, it's totally different. I'm sure you don't expect me to describe the traffic of 2016 of Bangalore. Don't think that Madras is any exception. Chennai is not a great exception. We are quite close, if not competitive. Now, why am I saying this? He has given such knowledge to steer through the 2016 Bangalore traffic. That's the provisions and the compliances and uh, steering through all of them and getting the exemption under the Income Tax Act. Now my job becomes very simple. We have moved out of the traffic. For example, if you come from Koramangala to Yalaganga, am I right? Both, both are in two different uh, end of the city. It takes minimum two hours. And it depends which part of the day. And sometimes it is unpredictable whether it is two or three or more. It depends how you are stuck and where you are stuck. But once you reach there, Alaganga, then it's only 20 minutes to Kembagoda International Airport. And same thing now, if I want to go to Chennai, most challenging is to cross the city. After that, I'm on the highway. But I want to also give you a caution. The caution is, when you are on the highway, when you are on the highway, it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of life and death. Because in our highways, you can see suddenly somebody just crossing. 
Now these two acts that I am going to share with you, simple knowledge, clear knowledge, on the highway with four track or you can even say six track highway, but one minute can cause difference between life and death. When I was listening to Rebecca Kabul and Yerava Kabul and one of our respected members very very smartly pointed out, I am reminded of, you know, the olden days during the British time, there was, uh, you know, the Madras High Court was passing some judgment and the uh, judgment was for a, uh, you know, person in Belur Jail. Belur Jail is famous, you must have uh, heard about it. And there were telegram at that time, you know, the telegram is abolished now. When the telegram was sent from the High Court to the jail, one comma made all the difference. It was like this, hang him not, comma, leave him. The telegraphic clerk, poor fellow, he said, hang him, comma, not leave him. <laughs> I need not explain anything more. Okay, now the law of FCRA and the LLA. We have already started discussing about the LLA. Lokpal and Lok Yukta Act 2013. You know? So, these two laws are something like this. This is not like the Bangalore traffic, this is like the highway. You feel quite confident and comfortable, but small mistake like that of the Kama or the Aya, irrevocable to irrevocable, can make the difference between life and death. With this little thought, I would like to quickly move over to the first topic that will be the FCRA. Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. Two thousand ten. Uh, friends, all of you know we are following this law for a long time, very long time. So it is not going to be my intention to speak about uh, the <coughs> whole context and background and also the overview of the provisions. That's uh, quite long and many of us who are in this area are well aware of the, the context and background and the overview. It is my intention today given the short time and given the two laws to present before you the latest developments. Meaning, in August what we have to do? In September what we have to do? In October, November, December what we have to do under the law? And I know if one of you, each one of you picking up this very very simple information, you can change the life of minimum 10 to 100 organizations who are affected by this law or covered by this law, which means 100 into 100, 100 into 10 you know 1000, 100 into 100 you know how many. In the last 9 months, we have conducted 4 interface workshops with the NPOs, interface workshops. What are they? 300, 400 NPOs, 30 tax officials headed by the director, the commissioner of income tax exemptions and 30 officials of the entire state of Tamil Nadu who are exclusively assessing the income tax exemption for the non-profits. Now, day before yesterday in Tirunelveli, south of Tamil Nadu, 350 NPOs and 30 officials whole day, right from morning to evening, 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock and then little before that in Coimbatore, which is not far away, 250 NPOs and 25 officials at that time. And then little before that in Madurai, the entire south after Tiruchi, another 450 NPOs. And in Chennai, in Loyola College, 450 NPOs. So last year alone, about 1,500 NPOs are directly covered by this interface. It's like an adala. You know, they speak about uh, all the problems that we have heard about, the practical issues that they are facing, and also the life situations that they are facing and then also the ways forward. For example, when we were talking about you know the 12-2 and the proviso, that when you get a 12-A for this year and all the income is exempt for the past years, the commissioner exemptions came up. How many of you don't have 12-A? Normally nobody will open their mouth. Will anybody say before 30 officials who are assessing them and the commissioner? 
65 of them minimum said we don't have 12 yet. And there are those who are running very, very small but important, effective non-profits in the remote corner of the country for poor people. Now the Honorable Commissioner, you know what he said? Somebody immediately, one professional said, can we come at 10 to see because it's only a school? Yes, of course you can come. But do you want to come under that? Or do you want to come under 12 a with 11? So we were silent for a moment. And quite a few said, 10 to see sir. Because it's very simple, below 1 crore or above 1 crore. If it's above 1 crore, the procedure, below 1 crore, no procedure, no, no form, nothing. But above 1 crore, then the time limit is now only 30th September. If you want for this year 10 23 c then we have to file the return on or before 30th of September. After that, the commission has no discretion even to control the delay in filing that application. So the commissioner said, what do you want? What do you think is best for you? Not anybody was giving. We were 16 uh, practicing professionals involved seriously, intensely in the non-profits were there. 350 NPOs were there. You know what he said? Don't think I am discouraging you from 1023 c But if you come to 1023 c I have no option than to tax you for the previous years. You are making me helpless. I want to help you. You are making me helpless. Can you think about it? Then immediately people said, No, oh, better to go for 12A. We go to 12A, you get 12A for this year, and you get 11 exemption, and automatically under 12 to provide, so you get exemption for the past year, then it is like gone to the highway from the Bangalore traffic, gone to the highway. Go for 10 to see if you want after that. Because past years are already not going to be liable. Can you see? This is the kind of, you know, beautiful, uh, positive, very encouraging, supportive, you know, thinking going on from the department side also. We cannot say, really good. yes, I can tell you. We should appreciate. I can tell you, I mean, the commissioner's name is Mr. Pavan Kumar there in Chennai, and 30, not a single person was left out in this interface from the department, including the inspectors. Including the new ones, because just in April, you know, there was transfers, as you know. One third, one half of get transferred. All those who developed in all of knowledge about charity. Of course, we are teaching them. I teach them in DTRTI. I also have opportunity in NADT. After all that, when they come to practice, their mood is still business, business, business. Whereas here, this is business of charity. You know, they have to change their mood. This interface, you know, changes. Now, why am I coming to tell you? At this time, two interfaces we managed only with income tax. Third interface, popular demand from the professionals and from the NPOs. Please allow at least half an hour, if possible one hour, during the whole day proceedings for FCRA. Because this is like diabetics and blood pressure, which is more dangerous. Both are equally dangerous. Isn't it? So that's why this FCRA has become so critical now. And one more I would like to already say before I go. If we think only FCRA is independent, it has nothing to do with income tax, we are totally mistaken. Today, FCRA has everything to do with income tax. When I go to that particular situation, I will say, but right now let me say, you know the nature of association is there in FCRA, five of them. You are aware of that, no? Right from registration to renewal to filing annual return, nature of association, what are they? Educational, social, economic, cultural, religious. One wrong tick can cause all the disaster. Now we have an organization, it is coming in the newspaper again and again in Chennai. Because of one wrong tick, 50 crores per annum is the tax liability. This is the sixth year. 300 crores is the tax liability for that organization. What is the wrong thing? In the FCRA, in addition to educational and social, religious also ticked. Whereas in the 12th year, there is nothing about religious. These days you may be familiar across the commissionerate in the country, 14 of them, 14 commissionerate. Some commissionerate gives only PCT or PRT. PCT is for public charitable trust, PRT is for public religious trust. 
Now this is a PCT, the case in example. And in the FCRA it is strict religious. So it becomes PRT for religious, PCT for? So income tax officer, nowadays they go through the website before the assessment. Many websites they go through. In the case of this organization, two, two set of people are ticked wrong. One is this organization itself which is receiving 100 to 120 crores per annum is a charitable, it has ATG, it has 12A, its exemption is going on for several years. But when the officer compared with the FC6 annual return, FC6, now it is FC4 annual return, he found it was religious also ticked. And he questioned, the assessor said, that, no we are only charitable, see here our objective. See here our uh, turnover, see here our application. But then the officer said, see here the FC6. See there the website. What you have ticked? Religious. Not only this. They are giving to 650 smaller organizations, they are giving money. So he went through minimum 400 of their websites. Their websites. And also the uh, uh, FCRA website, because today you can just click one minute, you can go to the, any organization in the FCRA website. And found, Predominantly, 80 plus percent of them also take the religious step. You understand? He said, on both accounts I have to tax you. Because in the public domain, this information is there. And when tomorrow when the audit questions me, I will lose my job. I have no choice. You know, I'm just giving an example. Now, similarly, there are tens of examples why FCRA is not isolated, independent, it is completely connected with the like the human health system in the legal regulatory framework of the non-profit organization, FCRA is very much connected, interlinked, interconnected, integrated with the other laws. With this kind of a linking between the first topic and the next topic, this topic, I would like to move on. Of course, little later, I will also touch upon this, so open out the the new law that is come up, LLA, little later. So, I'm going to speak about mostly the latest developments, if you don't mind. Because given the time, given the knowledge that is available, you are all experts on this. So many of you are auditing. You are also in the boards of some of the organizations. You are the treasurer in some organizations. You are president, chairman in some of the organizations. By virtue of our knowledge, the respect we command, Quite a few non-profits demand these responsibilities from us. In fact, when I speak of auditors' role for non-profits, it's a big topic by itself. Hundreds of roles we have today for non-profits as financial experts. Nobody else is more qualified, experienced, competent to help non-profits than our professionals. I can tell you this after 35 years. There are other people who can help in certain other areas, for example, program, management, governance. But in legal and financial, both are critical for governance. Nobody is better competent, more competent, nobody is more qualified than us. I say this not out of self-righteousness, I say this out of experience, I say this out of current reality. And today, it is not just for our fulfillment we have to do this, because there is a great danger that is going on for the non-profits. Great danger. Tax is only one. I, I show you in a moment from now how many democrats words are hanging for a non-profit. And tax is one such. So, on the latest developments, I would like to touch upon the FCRA renewal status. All of us know FCRA renewal status. I would like to spend two, three, less than five minutes on that. Next is Updation of bank accounts. This is the latest requirement. Last date is 31st of August. I would like to spend again 2-3 minutes. And then, quarterly, uh, yearly remittance information to be placed on the website. Previously, there was no threshold. There was a threshold, above 1 crore. And that was only annual. But now, no threshold. It is quarterly and also annual. Both are to be placed. And the the last one is the annual report in the new format FC4. FC6, which was the former previous annual report up to last year, last year meaning up to 13th of December 2015. 14th of December 2015, already the new form was introduced in the website. 
And even those who have not filed the return for last year 15, March 15, were expected to file the return in FC4 even for last year. So those who are delayed the return, they filed in FC4 last year. But this year no option. All of us, all those who are registered under FCRA, whether nil or 2,000 crore transaction or 1,000 crore, 50, 50 crore, 500 crore transaction, they have to use the form number FC4. There are some teething troubles. We know there are teething troubles in ITR 7. Three years, I had the privilege of giving input to the CBDC and to the commission rate of exemptions in different commission rate about uh, improving ITR 7. Even after that, and you know what happened last year? The tax cell of the CBDT asked a commission rate to improve the FC ITR 7 on 30th of March. Can you believe it? 30, and they gave the deadline 31st of March. Same year, not next year. Same year. And then the commissioner sat up to 3 o'clock on 31st night. 31st night, 3 o'clock is 1st April. He was like an April fool. Because when he sent the, all those things, they said time is over. Huh? And we all sat together, you know, because in the interface, so many recommendations, so many hardships were brought. We codified all of them very nicely with the example and then we presented to the commissioner. But what commissioner can do when he has only a couple of hours that he is given? So the improvements that have happened in ITR 7 are very little and we hope current year that can be better. But I am coming to FC 4, lot of teething troubles are there. I am not going to spend too much time but I want to just give you one or two how the teething trouble is happening and what we should do as professionals. The problem is we have to assess them, we have to certify them and what do we do about it. Now, with two pictures if you see, this is let us say a free independent scenario where the corporate and the government and the non-profit, non not even called non-profit at that time, voluntary organizations, by one second, split second, you can say it is so small, so small at that time. They were doing wonderful work, complementing the work of the government, but today the non-profit sector is so big, so big, it's almost competing with the government. Government who was antagonistic up until the 70s and the 80s, they started collaborating with the non-profit sector today. Thousands of crores of planned money is rooted through the NPOs today, NGOs today. I'm sure you are well aware of that. And even the Gongos, you know what is Gongo? Government NGO. It's a misnomer. Non-government organization, but then there are many Gongos. Take for example Kapat, take for example RNK, Rashtriya Magila Kosh, I can go on and on, APAC, those, all those uh, uh, you know, health based organizations, they are all gongos. Now, they are all together, actually part of government has moved here. Why gongo? Government doesn't want to give all the benefits to the staff, all those you know, gratuity and problem. So let us form a society and let the staff be uh, contracted so that there is no burden on the government, yet they will do government job. But they are all societies, all section 8 companies, formerly section 25 companies. So you can see this and what are two reasons, two main reasons for the non-profit sector becoming larger and larger. One is this country, great country, islands of prosperity, ocean of poverty. Criticize me if you like. Islands of prosperity, ocean of poverty. First reason why this is growing, whether we like it or not, it is a natural growth of the non-profit sector. The research shows around the world in North America, in Europe, in Australia, in Africa, in South America, all over the world globally, the non-profit sector is becoming vital for the human situation today. Whether it is welfare work, whether it is development work, education, health, etc., we will go into it because that needs separate time by itself. So, in that context, this is also attracting not only internal sources, external sources. There are questions about it. Should we still be depending on external sources? Should we become a donor country in 2016, in the third millennia? Of course, those are other questions. Now, internal sources, CSR, CSR, as you know, one of the most dependable organizations for CSR are the non-profit sector. I am not saying all of them. 
There are black sheep everywhere. They are there in government, they are there in corporate, they are there in non-profit. So let us not generalize all of them are so saintly. But definitely there are hundreds of them who are doing excellent work. We can't even imagine of doing that directly. We can indirectly help them as financial experts. But directly we cannot imagine. So this is the situation, two reasons. The internal, the CSR and the government is uh, rooting lots and lots, crores of funds. Now, externally also, from the World Bank, from the United Nations and its family, UNESCO, UNIDO, etc. And then also from the other international agencies, money is all flowing in. Now, multiple flow of foreign money and regulatory framework for non-profit organizations. Look at this for a moment. These are the multiple flows. Number one. Government is getting from World Bank, United Nations, United Nations is a large family. It's a joint family, the largest global joint family possible. You know there are some 23 or 30 of the member bodies of the United Nations, all of them. And of course the International Monetary Fund. They give bilateral funds to the various governments around the world. So that is one foreign flow. Second, corporate sector, FDI. How many crores? No, no scientific study. Thousands and thousands of crores and that is regulated by FEMA. And then there is NPO sector. Some idea is there because the MHA website gives you the flow of money. But it is not the latest, it will give you not 2011 or 2012, not the 2016. Quite substantial. So that is regulated by the FCRA. Not anymore 1976, it is 2010 now. Because for 35 years, from 1976 to 2010, 30th of April, it was the old law, 76 law. Now it is the 2010 law. And of course, across all sectors, there are other regulatory mechanisms. You can see that the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, which is across the sectors. It applies to for-profit, not non-profit, anybody. And then of course, uh, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. I mean. Who, who knows what kind of unlawful activities are going on. Anyway, that law gives certain definition and then that law gives certain stringent penalties, etc. This is just to give you one minute view of the global flow. Global flow of the foreign money. Because we should not get uh, caught into the microscopic only the FCRA money, which is very tiny comparing with the total foreign money. I'm, all, I'm saying all this through sources that are visible. Sources that are invisible, who knows? God alone knows. Sources that are invisible, whether drug money or trafficking money, God alone knows what is that. Now, moving further, there are this kind of surveillance bodies are there. For the international flow of money, there is Financial Action Task Force, which is based in Paris, internationally watching transactions. I'm sure you have heard about it. There is also Financial Action Task Force Asia Pacific Group, that's watching the Asia Pacific flow of money. There is also the Financial Intelligence Unit that is in our Finance Ministry right here in India, which is federated to the, the Paris International Agency. And then, of course, we have the other laws, the Prevention of Money Laundering, the FEMA, and then the FCRA. So foreign money is not simply regulated, surveillance is done by only FCRA. It is done by many other authorities. Why? As professionals of integrity, professionals of credibility, professionals of great knowledge, we need to look at the big picture and then we have to come to the small, the actual FCRA. Now, coming to the regulatory framework, how does this fits in, FCRA fits in? More than 10 years back, ICAI interested me a small responsibility to, to study the regulatory framework for the non-profit sector. And, uh, my colleagues and myself, we attempted on behalf of ICAI and we came up with a very simple approach. Incorporation laws, other laws and regulations, social security laws. It can be classified in any other manner, but we came up with this kind of a regulatory mechanism. In this, if you look at the incorporation laws, you can see there many things which you have already spoken about. For example, Indian Trust Act is one of the laws that is uh, possible for us to incorporate and then the Societies Act, the Central or the State Act and most states have the State Act and then the Section 25, now it is a Section 8 and then the Cooperative including the Max, 
the mutually aided cooperative, these are the certain. But in addition to this, there are hundreds and thousands of non-profits created by the court. You remember, um, Mr. Sargun Kumar was speaking about disputes in the family or disputes among trustees and then it goes to the court. And also will-based people, wealthy people write wills and part of it goes to the public work. Those are all created by the court of law. So we have so many of that. And then other laws, rules and regulations. It is right here, right here, FCRA is coming in, other laws. First is income tax, the ocean, um, so many, so many different perspectives. And then the FCRA 2010, and then service tax, uh, profession tax, property tax, PT, you can go on expanding. There are so many taxes. And then the, there is now already a question mark how far GST will become applicable to the non-profit organizations. Already there is a thinking, most non-profits will be covered by the GST. There are several non-profits covered by service tax right now. And most of them definitely will be covered under the GST. Why GST? Because non-profits have moved beyond simple charity to rendering service, professional service to other non-profits and to others. They are even Indian non-profits are giving professional service to African non-profits and other Asian country non-profits because Indian non-profits have become experts already in certain areas. You know, for example, women's network, children's rights, you know, certain areas Indian NGOs have become so, I mean, competent. They are asked expert advice and they are asked to study other country situations for which they are paid a fee. <laughs> So naturally those fees are likely to be affected by the GST. So that is just want to leave it with you as you are attending GST sessions. You can see how much of that is going to be applicable. And then the LLA 2013, that is the Lok Paul and the Lok Naik 2013. Now, I am not going to expand this. I just want to give the forest view at the back before I go to the latest developments. What is the forest view? The FCRA has history from 1967, not 1976, 1967 first draft and 1976, if you put 67 the other way around, the emergency time it became an act and 76 to 2034 plus years, hardly few amendments, 85 all of us no major amendments because the registration became compulsory, Prayer permission became compulsory, reporting became mandatory, etc. And then after that, the notification with effect from 1st May 2011, and not 2010. We call it 2010 Act, but actually the applicability of this Act is from 1st May 2011. It matters for very many reasons. For example, renewal. If you talk about renewal, it's after 5 years. So it is 5 years from when? 1st of May 2011. Those if you see, 1st of May 2011, 5 years, all have to renew. We are going to speak about renewal in few moments from now. Now, applicability, definition of certain terms, I am not going to spend time. But you know, what are they? Foreign source, foreign contribution, association, key terms. Now, there are some very, very important developments on the definition of foreign source. One example, that is, MNCs are companies with more than 50% shareholding by foreign country, foreign company, foreign entity or considered to be foreign source. You are aware of that. That's why all those companies, the MNCs who are registered here in India with more than 50% shareholding by outside, they could not give money to the non-profits without FCRA. But many gave in good violation, full violation, not knowing that is FCRA. And some knowing that is FCRA put the money in the FC account because they had FCRA registration. Both were proved to be wrong. Both were proved to be wrong by the Finance Act Amendment, not FCRA Amendment. Finance Act Amendment. What the Finance Act says that the uh, definition of foreign source gets amended in such a way that if the company has followed the FDI norms, foreign direct investment norms, and even if the shareholding is more than 50%, it is not foreign source. So with the result, what happened? Those who put the money from MNCs in foreign contribution account, they have violated because it's local and the amendment is retrospective, not prospective, retrospective. 
Now those who put the money in the local account at that time, at that time, now they they put the money in the local account and after some professional had made a transfer to foreign account. They could have left it like that. So great confusion in that area. But not to worry. I don't think FCRA will take that serious because the amendment itself came only now and people started giving money, MNC started giving money through CSR route. They also want to do CSR through trust, that's why they were giving the money. So that is one important amendment that has happened under the definition, for the definition of foreign source. Okay? And then who can accept, who cannot accept? We are all knowing there are NPOs can accept, all kind of NPOs, but not the government servants, not the judges, not political parties etc. They cannot accept the foreign money. Registration is mandatory. If not, prayer permission is necessary. Remittance has to be to the designated bank account. Up to 2011, 30th April, only one bank account was allowed. That is called the designated bank account. You can imagine NPOs all over, working all over Karnataka, all over South India, all over India. How could they have managed with one bank account? Was that practical? Of course, our NPOs are smart. Sometimes they are smarter than us. They teach us, you know, how to do. So what they were doing? Open the account in April, close the account in 15th of March. 31st of March, no balance in any account. Only one account that is designated account. Okay? So balance sheet will show only the balance in the designated account. So it was a full violation. It was going, going on. From 1st of May 2011, the new law has said you can open FCRA basic, uh, utilization bank account, but you have to inform the FCRA within 15 days. And then you should not put in that account any local money, you should not directly receive any money in that account. Also, you should not transfer from the utilization account to another FCRA account. You should only bring it to a designated account. From designated account alone, you can transfer to the any other FCRA account. Why any other FCRA account? Because some non-profits transfer the funds to other smaller bodies. So for example, I came across the first case, Delhi transferred to Lucknow. Lucknow transferred to Bhubaneswar. And the ministry found fault. You are only a utilization account. How are you allowed to transfer to another FCRA body? You should have brought back to designated account. Nowhere in the rules it says you should bring back to designated account. Rules only say you can now open a utilization account and you can inform the Home Ministry. So there are, in addition to in FCRA, one caution and those who are dealing with it know it. The law is small. The law is so small. This is put together all 76 law, 2010 law, rules of 76, rules of 2011, all put together and also acceptance of gifts all put together. Law is small, rule is small. What more? More are available in the FAQ. Frequently asked questions. If you go just put to Google FAQ, FCRA, you will get number of FAQs. They are more than the law. And sometimes we also come across total contradiction in the FAQ than what is in the law. And when we point out, of course, after six months, one year, they amend the FAQ, they amend the FAQ because they can't amend the law immediately, they have to take it to the parliament. Okay? And then, I also want to tell you this, beyond the FAQ, sometimes the correspondence from the officer there is a more law. The case in example is this, utilization bank should not transfer to another FCRA body is a correspondence. Not in the law, not in the law, not in the rule, not in the FAQ, but through the correspondence. This is what we come across. Now, after having said this, let me move to the changes, amendments, intimations and permissions. This was a constant nightmare. Changes. What changes? Bank account we have to change because banks are becoming not so helpful, not so friendly with the non-profit organizations, particularly when they have less money. More money they do everything. Like uh, Mr. Falcon Kumar said, put the deposit then I will take care of the rest. But less money, the NPOs are restless. They don't open the account and they, they know your customer names, you know, they go on for one and a half months, two months, three months. By the time the donor says, thank you, I found another person to give the money. You know, this kind of situation is going on. So changes in the bank account. 
Changes in the governing body are the board of trustees. You know, see family created trust, you won't have that problem often. But the normal NGOs which are floated by the people, there are changes, there are elections, there are terms, three years, two years like that. In those cases, members are also changing. You know, so those changes, and if 50% or more change, the number automatically gets cancelled before. Fortunately, all that is gone now, through the website, there is a form called FC6, there is a link there. <coughs> through the website, you can go and give intimation of all these changes nowadays. No need to go for prayer permission for bank change, no need to go for 50% more, more numbers in the board of trustees, prayer permission to the FCRA, intimation is more than enough. Friends, after saying this, I am now going to the most lively, live, most current topic. The current topic is, uh, out of 43,000 NPOs registered under FCRA, 20,000 plus are no problem. You know why? They are cancelled. If you go to the website, you will see a list of organizations cancelled. To be honest, many NGOs whose FCRAs are cancelled, they do not know. But who knows, you know, they are friends. Our neighbor knows better, better about this than anybody you knows. That's why when somebody comes to inquire, including to see a girl or a boy or even the inspection, anything, they come to the neighbor first before they come to us. Our neighbor knows how to tell about this. <laughs> Very often. So, the cancelled organizations, other people know that. And sometimes they point out, you know, the donors who want to send money, they know it already because they are going through the website nowadays. Whereas the organization doesn't know because no notice is sent. And the reason for cancellation is no reply from the organization. Why no reply from the organization? The reason is we have in Bangalore, we have in Bangalore fantastic organizations helping a few thousand children. Originally they registered in Hyderabad, they shifted their office, they informed at that time that they are shifting the office, they have the proof for sending the communication, but the ministry says, I have no, I have no intimation about your change of office, change of address. I have been sending the communication to Hyderabad and it has been returned, so you are cancelled. You are not filing return, you are cancelled. So you have like that 20,000 gone. The remaining 23,000, it's a rough, rough estimate. About 20,000 have applied for FCRA renewal. About 20,000. And FCRA renewal, if you see here, originally the time limit was 30th April 2015. That was extended to October 2015. And nothing happened from October 2015 to 13th of December 2015. 14th of December 2015, they came up with a new website and they said, you can now do online. And those uh, thousands who already did manual through form number FC5, they said, do we have to do? The ministry said, all have to do online, ignoring all the past, you know, the FC5 renewals, all have to do online. So they did online and time was extended up to 15th of March 2016. 15th of March 2016, not many, not all applied, extended up to 30th of June 2016. And then what they said, the validity of the five year, if it is expiring by 30th of June 2016, we extend that to up to 31st of October 2016. Now, there is a circular there. If you go to the website, FCRA website, you have the circular there. But, difficulties. The bank says, five years over for you on 30th of June. We are in August now. July onwards, many banks are not accepting the remittance. You know? Because they calculate from 1st May 2011, 5 years over, 30th of April 2016. So now we are giving the circular. And when we give the circular, the bank says, no, get communication for you, for your organization, specifically from the Home Ministry, so that I can credit the money. Just to give you one example of the hardship that is going on right now. But fortunately, with a clear opinion, and also the circular and asking them to go to the website and see some banks have started remitting the money, I mean crediting the money of the foreign contribution remittance. Now, most of them have received FCRA renewal. I can say roughly, it's just a rough estimate, 75 to 80 percent have received the FCRA renewal. Those who are yet to receive, we can easily check the online. It will show you submitted under process, one category. 
some people are asked to resubmit why resubmit the name as per the certificate and the name they filled up in the application were slightly wrong like we spoke of pan problems in the beginning of this in the morning the slightly wrong slight mistake so the resubmission is happened and the online will say resubmitted processing is going on you can go to the tracking there is in the go to the website it says track the fcr and renewal easily you can see the status then those who receive it cannot relax because number one they have intimated the bank that's not enough bank has to go to online through their system like we spoke of income tax bank system and icia system bank has to go to their system and find that the npo is really renewed and who have to make sure not bank we bank is not worried our evidence is pending okay that's one second another serious issue that is happening we have applied in the renewable social and education act ngos has it mostly in social educational institutions has it educational little bit of social but you know what the certificate has come can you imagine ticking some more including religious the certificate has come i have seen minimum minimum 50% of the renewables religious is also ticked though they never tick to do with the renewable application then what will be the implication i need not again repeat i already spoke about it little little before when it goes to income tax they will say your certificate says you are a religious cancel atg cancel atg 31 bb violation because you are a religious body and your 12a is pct public charitable trust if not pct in 1973 and 1980 90 it is simply 12a it doesn't say that it did not speak about pct or prt but you have been claiming as a charitable organization see the assessment audits every time the officer says the assessee is a charitable trust he has never said anywhere you are a religious trust so therefore you have to go back to the ministry under the fc6 option for change of the nature of association and then ask the ministry to delete what is not relevant for you and then npo should intimate the bank some npos are getting show cause notice yes this is another they have applied for the renewal but ministry is giving a show cause notice you have not applied for renewal show cause why we cannot cancel your registration this organization has the fee acknowledgement now it is a gate payment originally we paid dd all were returned not all were returned some were returned some gone now we have the proof for the gateway payment we also have the proof of the tracking number for the renewal application made but then the show cause notice is you never applied don't category another category the ministry says your number as per certificate and your number as per the website our website government website is a mismatch so please uh, explain why you cannot be cancelled so we are getting already three to four varieties of notices for cancellation show cause notice we need to respond to that and this is not like the farmer time you write a long letter wrong reply with an answer you have to put it crisply in the in the online in about uh, two to three lines you know what you want to say what you want to say one page imagine you want to say in three lines all the story and after all that what would you attach no provision for attachment you know uh, then uh, under rule 12 this is a this is still a consolation this is still a consolation under rule 12 8 of the foreign contribution regulation rules 2011 within 4 months after the expiry renewal application can still be made can still be made which means we can still make so what is the expiry now even if it was june government has extended up to 31st of october isn't it that means november december january february and we don't we don't we don't have to recommend the wait of the february but we can straight away apply if they point out you are not applied or if they point out that you are not applied and you are applied with the proof you go back again and when you go to reopen the fc3 online it won't go forward because you already applied according to you but according to them not applied so what you do you send an email nothing will happen and then you start following up with a phone call once twice twice five times then they will open the fc3 again fc3 online 
then you go and fill up and then you resubmit it again. So in other words, the lesson here is for those who have not received still the, uh, sorry, those who have not applied, still there is a window open. And for those who have applied, not yet come, watch the online tracking. For those who have applied and the renewal has come, cannot relax. Ensure bank is also getting it and ensure the contents are correct, particularly the nature of association. Why? In, in a case in Bangalore, yesterday, yesterday, they got the renewal. The name they applied, as per FC3 online, which is there is a print is there, and the name they have given are totally wrong. Both are wrong. Number is correct. Number is correct. Nature of association is correct. But the name is wrong. You can imagine what will happen. Bank won't entertain. Bank will say you are not the one. Huh? Then, updation of bank accounts. Updation of bank accounts. There are three, four scenarios I will quickly run through. Number one, no change in the FCRA designated bank account. What shall we do? Still go to the, get the state, get the letter from the bank and then uh, go to the FC6 and open the website and put your username and password and still update the bank account. So that three things will match. Account number as per bank statement, account number as per the renewal certificate and account number as the FC4, the annual return, all three should match. Only then it is safe. Another category. There is no change in the FCRA designated bank account, but not correctly reflected in the FCRA website. FCRA website 3975 is there, but in the bank statement, long number is there. Why? Because during the computerization, they would have put the long number. We have not updated that in the ministry website, so we have to update that. And then another case, there is a difference, this is the computerized. In another case, bank in FCRA renewal matches with a checkbook but not as per bank statement. Can you believe? Checkbook not as per bank statement. Why? I have to take the trouble to check with the bank. Why is this happening? The bank says our software is not allowing, sir. Their software is allowing to print the checkbook with the correct long number. But its statement is not coming. Now what we have to upload in the annual return, along with the annual return, you are familiar. Not checkbook, bank statement. So when you upload the bank statement, the account number and the certificate number won't match. So we need to take precaution on that also. Now in case of utilization bank account, other than FCRA designated bank account, just like designated bank account, utilization bank accounts also have to be updated. It could be one account, it could be five account. They all have to be updated. Now display of annual and quarterly information. I told you, Previously there was a threshold 1 crore, now there is no threshold, so compulsory annual uploading of financial information without any financial limit, 1 rupee, 1 crore, 10 crore, all liable to display. Annual financial information, receipts and payment, IID and balance sheet in the website on or before 31st December has to be uploaded. Compulsory quarterly uploading of grant information without any financial limit or before 15 days after the end of the quarter. That means for uh, April, May, June, July 15th, we should have put it already in the website. And for uh, June, July, August, September, many have not done because ignorance is best. You know, many, many have not done. If not in the website of the NPO, you can put in the website of the Home Ministry. Home Ministry, that provision also there. So you don't have to worry about the website for the NPO. Many have, many don't have. So go to the FCRA website, they are allowing you to put the information there. At least this I will give it as a priority because they can use these little things for cancellation. They are waiting how to cancel it now. Hmm? More cancellations than renewals. And then filing of annual return, this is urgent now because some people may say 31st December is the last date, why do you worry now? But 30th September is the last date for IT return filing. And FCE is a small part of the IT. So if you don't finalize the FCE, how will you file the IT? So therefore that is also urgent in August or later September so that 30th April, 30th September we are able to incorporate FC transactions and file the income tax return. Now, there are some problems coming, I just will flash it to you and then you will be aware of it. Problem number one, details of foreign contribution received as transfer on local source, second recipient is not allowed to be captured. 
FC4 is not capturing the subsequent receipt. Only the original receipt from abroad is captured. That means it won't match with the audited statement. Money from abroad is captured. Money from another organization which is foreign contribution received by this NPO is not captured. Second, cumulative amount shall not be greater than total FC received. That is how the website shows. This is an anomaly. Donor wise detail in excess of 20,000 need not be disclosed. That means the total, donor, total do donations as per FC4 and the auditor statement will not match, unlike before, before it used to match. Of course, these are little things, email address, website address and purpose for which it is received shall be provided. There are only 5 purposes as against 56 purposes. 5 purposes are clear, social, economic, educational, cultural and religious. The purpose wise OB utilization CB is no more required. Previously, in form number FC6, 56 purposes were there, opening balance, receipts during the year, utilization, closing balance and exactly it will match with the audited statement. Today it won't happen in the FC4. This is the reality. And then utilization of foreign contribution, utilization for aims and objectives of the organization, they are expecting us to put administrative expenses, also invested in fixed deposit and purchase of fixed asset. Friends, if you take NPO, IND, RNP, very often you won't find admin expenditure separately. You may find the FD separately, you may find fixed asset addition separately, but not the admin expenditure. But now the FC4 expects us to fill the admin separately. Why? Because more than 50% admin is not possible without the prior permission of the FCRA division. Then, Amount invested in FP is not getting added in the total utilization. Amount invested in fixed deposit cannot be construed as utilization. It could have been a separate line item. This is only a suggestion. Uh, when you go to FC4, you will find this problem there. The FD will not be matching. If you add it, it will not match. This is like I spoke of ITR7 problems. There are problems here in the FC4. Not to worry, just recognize. And when it comes to CA certificate, we have to issue a CA certificate, which we are uploading. They will put the notes, whatever notes are required. At least we would have performed our responsibility about these uh, anomalies and the discrepancies. Balance of unreplaced foreign contribution in cash bank at the end of the year. To reflect cash on hand, cash at bank and fixed deposit. If you include advances like rental, electricity, telephone, again it will not match. So in our CA certificate, we have to take a position, stand. What do we want to show it as closing balance? Only these three things, cash bank FDs are also other advances. We have to take a stand. My suggestion you may consider. Take only cash bank FD. Because if you take electricity advance, phone advance, rental advance, that will go on and on for several years. It will never come back. We don't know. So better you take only cash bank FD, put a note. Closing balance includes only these three things and not advances. A small disclaimer. And then annual return. One minute on this. Annual return in FC6 to be changed to FC4. Six attachments are required. Financial statement, bank statement, CA certificate, declaration by chief functionary, seal and signature. When it comes to bank statement, only one attachment is possible. Now if you have designated account and utilization account, what we have to do? Scan them together. Otherwise, if they take the closing balances of only designated bank account, it won't match with the auditor statements and CA certificate. Scan them together utilization bank so that the balance in the designated bank and utilization bank together will make the closing balance and then the last date for uploading is 31st December but as I have shared with you I think it is better that we also upload it or at least completely finalize it with no change whatsoever well before 30th of September because including this we have to file the IT return by 30th of September and this year you know that there is no uh, delay form 10 and all that if there is a delay it will not be allowed no condonation 119 condonation for form 10 delay is no more possible after the amendment and uh, association the form, form for intimation of securities is uh, one the association filing nil return need not upload financial statements. Looks like a great relaxation. What is there to file financial statement? It is a nil return. There is no financial statement to be filed. Now, balance of unutilized foreign contribution, certificate of the chief functionary and the CA certificate both won't match because in the certificate of the chief functionary, it is unclear whether the advances have to be added. 
We are clear, I suppose, our uh, closing balance is with the cash bank FD and should, uh, should uh, CB include cash bank FD or advances? Give only cash bank FD with a footnote that advances are not included. Information regarding foreign debts, another new information required in the FC4. Previously it was not required. It's easy to give the number if they are working, but ensure they have complied with the Foreign Debts Act. For example, if they are interns coming to work in the NPOs, they can't come with the tourist visa. They have to come with the volunteer visa. So there are number of cases they come as a tourist visa. I hope you may have read in the papers, and they are working as volunteers. This is not allowed. And that's why they are capturing this information through the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. Validation of the designated utilization bank account. I spoke of updation earlier. Now I am speaking about double checking that validation. How do you validate? When you do FC4 return, you can make sure that your correct bank number is appearing there, designated. Your correct utilization bank is also appearing there in the, in the FC4 when you are uploading, when you are filling in and uploading the FC4. Caution while uploading. All FC bank account statements, both designated and utilization needs to be uploaded along with the FC4. Bank account details shall contain branch address with PIN code, IFSC and account number. Administration. I already spoke about it. Just one word on this. When you, when you before filing the FC4, even if admin is not shown separately, you compute it and see it is below 50% of the total. Because if it is above 50%, we are directly violating Section 81B and Rule 5 of the FCRA rules. So we need to see. And sometimes it's easy. For example, I give a simple example. Some people come for governing body meeting. Some put that as an admin. Some put that as program. You may ask how both are possible. Those who come for the governing body meeting, they also have a workshop on certain topics. And they debit that as program expenditure. Just to give you a live example. But some others, they do some workshop during the, during the governing body meeting, but they debit it to admin. And if you put it as admin, it is exceeding the percentage. If you put it as program, it is well below the, I am not uh, suggesting any manipulation at all, absolutely not. But the correct reflection of the head of account according to the activity, activity conducted. Now, prayer approvals, I gave a caution earlier. Fortunately, all those prayer approvals through manual system is gone. Now, you can change the name of the association. I said renewal names are wrong. We can change it now. Opening utilization account also we can do and intimate through the FC6. More than 50% board also we can intimate. No prayer permission required. Change even in aims and objectives. Of course, we can't change aims and objectives unless we change in the trust deed and the memorandum. For which separate procedures are available, but after having done it, you can simply intimate through the FC6 online in the website about the change and objectives. For all of that, you have to give documentation, sufficient documentation, like the Register of Society's uh, uh, seal on the changed uh, memorandum or the ROC certificate on the changed memorandum of a uh, Section 8 company, we have to attach for the intimation and change of address within the state. If it is outside the state, it's a separate process. Number also will change. If it is within the state, number will remain. For all the above, FC6 to be done online, which has become much simpler than in the past. And this I have already spoken to you. Section 21J6, MNC companies, I have already spoken to you. They are, even if 50% and more of shareholding is by international bodies, it is FCRA, no more FCRA. I have not mentioned to you why the government amended. Two major parties in the country accepted from these companies thousands of crores. It's reported in the paper. So they felt the best is to amend the FCRA. And that too, the objective preamble was to help the NPOs for CSR. Companies and NPOs for CSR. Okay, any anyway, background is different, purpose is good. Now, other intimations, gift from relative in FC1 within 30 days, emergency hospitalization within 60 days, in client paper, no form, received by election candidate, again same form within 45 days, opening up sub-account FC6, that is a utilization account within 15 days. Now, I like to quickly move to the LLA, very very simple there.
maybe this is the first time that uh, we are opening this topic. Uh, we, we know about Lokpal and Lokayukta for a long time. We have discussed a lot, lots of debates. But for NPOs, as applicable to NPOs. Meaning, background and definition, persons covered under the LLA, complaints, investigations and attachment of properties, declarations and some issues. These are the points I would like to just open it up, not go into all the details because there is no use in discussing all the details. It is, it is pending. As, as I am saying here, you can see here, the act came from 16th of January 2014. 2013 is the act. Like FCRA 2010 came on 1st May 2011, this act 2013 came into effect from 16th January 2014 by the notification. The implementation is deferred and the last date which was fixed on 31st July is now deferred to 31st December. Many representations made by NPOs, many representations by NPOs, nothing happened. One fine morning last day of the parliament, 50 plus MPs, not NPOs, MPs, both are different. Uh, they went up to the PM and said this should not come. And the PM said no, this will not come. Hmm? So what happened? No bill distributed, no discussion. It was referred to the Standing Committee of the Parliament. This is in the open public domain, you will see. So now it is in the Standing Committee of the Parliament. Somebody told me the other day, day before when we were discussing, Sir, it will be standing now. <laughs> Don't worry. Once it goes to the standing, it will be standing. You sit and relax. I don't know whether I can make such a statement because 31st December is the deferred date that is there. So let me move on quickly. Number one, Lokpal, protector of the people, hopefully, derived from the Sanskrit word Lok, people, Pala, the protector, Lokayukta, appointed by the people. This is the background, the philosophical background for the Lokpal and the Lokayukta. India has ratified the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Still, we are one of the you know, most well-known country for corruption in the index. In the corruption index, if you go, you will see that we are quite ahead, quite ahead of uh, it's only some of the African countries. Now, government committed for clean and responsive governments, governance, contain and punish acts of corruption. This is the objectives and the background. Now, LLA effective from 16th January, Lokpal for union, Lokayukta for state, extends to the whole of state and applies to public servants in and outside India. You may question me. Why are you saying all this? We are here for NPOs, seminaries and NPOs. I'm coming to that. Competent authorities. For PM, it is the House of People. Ministers, it is the PM. For the members of the House of People, it is the Speaker of the House. Members of the Council of States, it's the Chairman of the Council. And then, officer in the ministry, the minister, chairperson or members of the bodies, corporate call, call authorities, autonomous, local, etc. We also spoke in the context of income tax exemption. They are the minister in charge of the administrative ministry or such board or the corporation. These are the competent authorities. Now, no competent authority was prescribed for NPOs until recently. Recently, the competent authority was prescribed in June. For FCRA, it is the FCRA division, Home Minister. For others, it is the relevant ministry which has given the maximum grant. Which has given the maximum grant. In the case of three ministries have given the grant, it is that ministry which has given the maximum grant is the competent authority under the Lokpal and the Lokayukta Act. Now, some definitions. Unless these definitions are there, there is no spice in this discussion. Generally discussion. Okay? Central Vigilance Commission. LLA directs once complaint comes to so Central Vigilance Commission. LLA also directs complaints against the public servant under the Prevention of Corruption Act 1988, Section 2E. LLA also directs complaints to the PCA, that is the Prevention of the Corruption Act. And public servant is defined in Section 210, persons referred to in Class A to H of the Section 14.1. There is a long list there. A to H. You saw that number before Prime Minister, Minister, MPs, MLAs, etc. The whole of them are prescribed in A to H in section 14, one of the LLA, and the definition is 210. People are questioning how ordinary NPO people who are a trustee, innocent, don't know anything, they become public servants under this law. 
That's a question that is going on. Investigation, section 21G empowers investigation as defined under section 2H of the Code of Criminal Procedure. Investigation is authorized under the LLA. And then special courts need not say names of people in the country. There are special courts constituted for trying certain people in high responsibility. Even in Karnataka, you have special court for you know some people from outside the state, not only for people in Karnataka. Okay. I need not mention names. Persons covered in 14 section 2 1 0. These are the people. Uh, 14 1 A Prime Minister, B Minister, C the members of parliament, D the group AB officers, E the CD officers, chairperson, etc. of the body of the board financed by the government, and F. Yeah. So these are the competent authorities you just saw now. Competent authority for these people are Central Vigilance Commission. And then going further on this, any person. Listen here. This is the crux of the matter. We have come to the end of the this 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 topic. Crux of the matter is director, manager, secretary, or other officer of every other society or AOP or trust, wholly or partly financed by government, whose annual income exceeds one crore. Annual income means from the government, government grant. Exceeds one crore. That comes under section 14.1g. They are covered. They are public servants. They are covered under the LLA. That means speak about various NPOs that uh, we are associated. Where in a case of a school, aided school, ordinarily one crore will be salary. In an aided college, ten crore, five crore, fifteen crore is normal government grant. So they will all come under the LLA. Then. Any person who is again same thing, director, manager, secretary, other officer of every other society or AOP trust in receipt of donation, ten lakhs. Yes, sir. Ten lakhs today is pocket money. Today, for an NPO, ten lakh is a pocket money. So with that, you can cover easily. You will come under the yellow lay, yellow lay. Okay. I think some of us also will come under. Many of us will come because we are either treasurer or you know uh, maybe the what is the chairperson of the finance committee, audit committee. Because you can see the wide uh, definition. Uh, there is so ambiguous, so vague. Anybody can be covered. Anybody from the NPO can be easily covered. Now, what will happen in the case of complaints and preliminary inquiry? Preliminary inquiry against the public servant will be ordered to ascertain whether there exists prima facie case for proceeding in the matter. In respect of ABCD officers, it will be the Central Vigilance Commission. And the preliminary inquiry shall be completed within 90 days. Website of the Lokpal will display all our names. We will become very popular. <laughs> for no reason whatsoever, we will become quite popular. Quite popular. And uh, I don't want to trivialize the issue. Uh, last Sunday, Sunday on a holiday, there was one workshop, and uh, there came a, a particular issue. Just 30 seconds, I will tell you. I am sure you will appreciate. There are certain NPOs who have bought vehicle, vehicle in personal name. Okay, why? To avoid road tax, or to have it as a owner vehicle to go to another state. After all, Chittu to. In uh, Tamil Nadu to Karnataka to cross, if you have a taxi, you have to pay thousands, and you know you'll be stuck. So, but those little things they put in personal name. Now, when the local yukta is applicable, how will they disclose that asset? And if they don't disclose that asset, it will be construed they got that asset by corruption. Simple. I'm giving a simplest live example in the non-profit sector. Then. Well, the local has reason to believe the reason for such belief to be recorded in writing on the basis of material in his possession. Any person in possession of the proceeding corruption, such person is accused of having committed an offence relating to corruption. Such proceeds or offences are likely to be concealed, transferred, or dealt with in any manner may result in frustration of any proceedings relating to confiscation. Local, the authorised officer may order or tax the property according to the Income Tax Act. We are familiar how they attach the properties under the Income Tax Act. Income Tax Act, at least we know, assessment will be done. We will be declared as assessee in default, and then the recovery notice will come. And after that, the attachment. Here, nothing will happen. You will only have attachment for not knowing why at all. Even if I give this example of the, you know, vehicle in the name of the trustee, managing trustee. And if he gets a notice, no other caution will be there. No show cause will be there. And a special court, 
Unlike Vigilance Commission, you also have the special code for trying certain people, more important people, special code will be set up. Every order of attachment uh, shall have the expiry period and also for the purpose of this subsection, person interested in relation to immovable property includes all persons, etc. These are all consequences. Now, last part. What the public servant has to do? PS shall make a declaration of his assets and liabilities. <laughs> Return of assets and liabilities on first appointment. Whenever you are first appointed. Of course, from 16th of January 2014 to now, whether we are in office, whether we have resigned, it is applicable. Past or present, past or current, it is applicable. So 31 December, if it becomes applicable, even if we had one day we were there on 16th of January 2014 in some body, we will become responsible to file this declaration. Now, details of PS, spouse and the dependent children. Friends, <laughs> um, some people have already gone to the High Court, particularly a, a, a lady has come to the High Court saying, I don't, anybody, I don't mind disclosing this, not to my husband. <laughs> it's a life case. It's a life case. This jewelry is given by great grandmother. I am keeping it for my great grandchild, children. God knows, child, children. I am keeping it. Anybody, I don't mind, but not to my family members. Natural, quite sensitive. That's our ethos, that's our culture. You can't find fault with her. Just because her husband, have, you and me, happen to be in some body, she has to disclose. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. And what will be the repercussions? We have to be sensitive to these realities when it comes to application of the. Finally, friends, uh, details of the PS spouse, dependent children, immobile property, movable property, debts, all have to be given. Friends, I leave you with this uh, final set of issues, just questions. No answer. You know why? Answers will come by standing committee whenever it decides to sit. <laughs> Hopefully, before 31st of December, because 31st of December is the last date for the filing these declarations. So, issue 1, applicability and definition to public servant. Poor lady in the village, she is also a member in the society because there is an NGO doing good work there in the village in Kubli Darbar or in Shimoga, remote district there in the Lari. She has to declare. She doesn't have, she doesn't know what is declaration. She doesn't know what is income tax. She doesn't know what is filing return. She has to declare. As of now, as of now. Persons holding honorary posts in the boards of NGOs will be attracted. You and you and me. And what about religious bodies? Not clear. Is a public trust as a public institution? Public trust. Just because husband and wife has set up a trust in the memory of the family member, will it become a public institution? Huh? A businessman, no need to name, great business people, philanthropic people, because they lend their name, credibility to an NGO, will they become vulnerable? Should they become vulnerable under this? NPOs are covered. Who are liable? Definition of officer, manager. Huh? Every other society, did you remember? Every other society. What they mean? There are societies set up by the government. They are exempt. The every other society is others. And then an employee holding that designation, director. You know, in NPOs, one culture is give name director to many people so that they feel happy. Director, director, administration, director, maladministration, director, program, director, no program, director, finance, you know, go on. So will they all be affected because the name director is coming there in yellow line now? And then threshold limits on NGOs, FCA, they see it and government grant. That's very small, 10 plans today, FCRA. Huh? and one, one crore of the government grant, particularly when the government has decided to root such a lot of money through the NPOs, one crore is that threshold, is it reasonable, you know? And then, who will file the declaration, the NPO or the individual official? If you go to the website of the FCRA, there is one thing that says, open here and file the declaration. Now, one, you and me are in three NPOs or five NPOs. Some other public figures, NPO leaders, they are in 20 NPOs. Who will file for that person? 20 NPOs will file, then 20 notices will come, 20 arrest warrants will come. <laughs> so, if, if, if it is an NPO where an individual is a member of several boards, what will file, what will, who will file, how the information will be handled? See, there is one High Court decision which has said, 
the wife can give the jewelry and all of that in confidence to the government, in confidence in a sealed cover. Now, who, who, whose confidence? In what sealed cover? Today, all you want in a sealed cover, it will be open. If you give without uh, seal, it may not see, they may not see. If it is a sealed cover, we know how it will be opened. Uh, so, what about Benami transactions? There are, there are, you know, named hundreds and thousands of Benami transactions. What happens to them? These are people who are legally hard work by their integrity and honesty, by their devoted service, if they have earned some money, that has to be disclosed. But the other kind of transactions will not be disclosed. These are some issues that are there. Now, I am bringing this, please don't mistake me, to conclude, NPO should not be accountable, not at all, not at all. NPO should be accountable. After all, whether it is 1 crore or 10,000 rupees, if they are working for the public, they should be accountable. My point is, they have accountability through FCRA system. We spoke about FCRA reporting, monitoring. FCRA has many ways of monitoring and they file income tax return, income tax assesses, scrutinizes and gives exemption or denies exemption and if it is a society, society register has power to monitor, if it is a company, register of company has power to uh, monitor, register of company has power for inspection, investigation, why even handing over to SFIO? Today, Companies Act section 2012, 212 has power to hand it over to Serious Fraud Investigation Authority. Office. All these are there. While all these are there, why cannot they be used for ensuring uh, accountability by the NPOs instead of the officials, the honorary people, the people who are uh, lending their name for credibility, they be given this uh, unwanted or uh, burden. But that is the question that I want to place. The reason for me to place this question is if we have an opportunity, we are trying to do this in several bodies to send a memorandum to the government. We want to be accountable, we want our people in public life to be accountable. But what is the best way to do that? With these thoughts, and thanking you all for giving me this opportunity, especially at the new most important time, food time, we have gone for food for thought. What is today's legal position, sir? Uh, up to 31st December, yeah. up to 31st December, yeah. nothing to be done. Nothing to be done. Nothing to be done. But watch out. <laughs> watch out. And possibly, possibly by uh, a responsibility that we have, try to find a way to send memorandum to make this workable and practical. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, please. Yeah, in FC6 return, yeah. there are two columns are there. Yeah. Prior Primary receipt and secondary receipt yeah, is there. Yeah. The total donation amount, what will we receive yeah. from foreign source? Yeah. It is reflected yeah. in the primary source. Yeah. Now, what could be the secondary receipt? Now, FC6 is no more in vague. Previously, previously. Yeah, previously it was there. Yeah. Previously, for example, if you get money from, let us say, US, yeah. directly it will be primary. Yes. Now, money from US can come to another body, let us say a Bangalore body, large body. They in turn give it to a smaller body. That becomes the secondary receipt. For example, yes. Uh, we have kept the only FCs in the FDs. Okay. We we have we should be receiving the same cost amount. Yes. FDs. Yes. That could be the secondary receipt. Yes, that is a secondary receipt. That is a secondary receipt. Big story for more than 20 years. You know, we debated on that, saying it is not foreign contribution. It is local branch, local bank, etc. Law ministry said no, no, no. It is foreign. And FCRA now explanation two to section foreign source definition says interest from the FC money is also foreign contribution. One more. Yeah. In rule five. Rule five, please, please. Yeah. In rule five, actually, this is some payments account of the FCRA financials. Yes. The format has not disclosed in rule five. No. The rule which disclosed that the administrative expenses could not more than 50% total contributions received. Yes. But anywhere else, any rule which has disclosed the format of the FCRA financials? No, not yet. Not yet. So far, there is no FCRA financials at all. Only in the case of company, Section 8 company, Schedule 2 says this is the format. Okay? For society, for trust, nothing. We have come up with the ICAI with a recommended FS format. 
but it is not a mandatory. Yeah? Shall I go to one more, then I come to you? Yes, yes please. The TDS received on the, those FDs, right? yes. which I am receiving after two years or three years, yes. it will be refunded. Right? Yes. So that will also come to this one. FC account. FC, FC account. account. Because the, there are two types of TDS. One is on the local FDs, another will be on the Sir, FC FDs. Sir, but what happens now? In income tax, we cannot give that FC. I know, I know. You will be giving local. Yeah. I know you will be coming to that question. All of us have that issue. What we are trying to do, apportion it and transfer to the FCI account and put a note. Live question, those who are handling, I am, I am facing this uh, in many, many cases. Okay, one more there please, I will come. Yes sir, please. Uh, declaration says that individual, wife and dependent children. Yes. Individual, wife. Yes. Dependent, wife. Yes. How independent? Yeah. <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, there are many questions on that. I, my friend has already said one wife, so <laughs> suppose that, uh, you know, it can be the other way around also, one husband, but this is speaking only about spouse now, not uh, spouses or anything. Many questions are around that, but fortunately, the bill that has moved is removing the spouse and the dependents. Not because of NPOs, because of others. <laughs> because of others. Hmm? Pardon me? Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Very beautiful point. Today they are also integral part of our society. They have their right. Very good point. Yes. I mean, we have to talk about many things, you know, differently abled people to transgenders. Our society is a, such a beautiful society, integrating all types and all people. So, I am sure those are the points that should come in our memoranda. May I go to one more, please? Yes, yes. Not submission, yeah. quarterly information is placing in the website. Okay, Own website or government website, whichever is easier for you. <coughs> is that okay? No need to send anywhere. Place in your website. Annual return, FC4, has to be sent, uploaded to the FCRA. Even annual information, annual information, IAD, RMP, BNS, not FC4, annual information has to be placed in the website. No threshold now. Previously threshold was 1 crore, no threshold now. Okay? Yes ma'am, yes ma'am. They define what is social, educational, because the education activities are so, so these are the social So far I have given, I don't know how many thousands of workshops on FCRA, first time I am facing this question. Luckily, if you ask me charitable purpose, they define, I say my friend has already given all the explanation. Unfortunately, or fortunately, FCRA does not define about social, educational, uh, cultural, nothing, nothing, nothing. You know, it is only for us to... Can everything be under social then? No, if you do so, income tax will scrutinize and ask you, where are you coming? And the 250. See, this is where I said BP and blood pressure, they are all part of our health system. Okay? See, she is asking a very, very fine question, relevant question. FCRA, you may want to define anything. But what about when you go to, the same thing is getting incorporated with the financial statements, consolidated financial statements. There you have to take a position. When nowadays income tax is asking for activity report. So activity report in financial expenditure has to be, I mean related, linked. So then you have to say whether you are under section 250, or you are education, health, medical, or uh, uh, relief of the poor. So accordingly you have to do that. That is my experience. You can add up this nature of uh, activity, you can change yeah. just by uh, finding FC6. Yeah, yeah, you, you mean uh, when you want to change the nature, nature. Okay. yes, yes, you can go to FC6, it is live website, and you can go and change there. They will ask you for certain documentation, you know. And of course, please remember to link with the fundamental document, the object class of the society. Yeah, well, actually, the original application, the real application has gone with all these education, uh, medical and... Uh, no, medical won't be there. Yeah, sorry, social. Yeah, social. social. Okay, uh, okay. But they have uh, renewed with only social. Yeah, so one they have omitted. You go and rectify, add, it's possible. Adding is possible, deletion is possible, both are possible. Okay, good. Anything yeah. else? Yeah, sorry to interrupt, uh, can you take yeah. this questions offline so that uh, for third session will be get done. Yeah, yeah, I am very sorry that I have exceeded because uh, one hour uh, I uh, I lost, but that was because of uh, 
great ocean of knowledge of the Bangalore traffic on the highway, this much is possible. The highway is very long, it will go far ahead. All over the country we have six lane highways now. So any other question during lunch time, I am very happy to answer. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I wish you all the best. It's a very interesting and informative, but uh, we need to conclude, we are concluding this uh, second technical session. I thank the uh, speaker for his time and efforts and uh, he made it very simple and explained it in a very simple manner. Give a big round of applause. I thank the speaker on Bangalore branch of ICA. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now we will take a break. Uh, schedule uh, time to come back is 2.30 because already it is 2.25. I request to come back by 2.45. Thank you. <laughs>